Okay, how to factor polynomials. So the purpose of this video is I'm going to just try to give you some powerful uh, tips on how to factor in the most polynomial situations that you're going to come across in in algebra or algebra 2 or college algebra, whatever of course you might be that involves factoring polynomials. Um, these are going to be the most common situations. Now, I just want to tell you right up front that this is, you know, you're not going to be able to, uh, if you're lost in this subject, if you will, this is going to help you out, but it's not going to be enough. So I have additional videos on my YouTube channel, but uh, if you really need extensive instruction, and I kind of suggest that's the case uh, for a lot of people who are struggling, then you might want to check out my math courses. I'll leave a link in the description um, of this video if you're interested in learning uh, more from me in a kind of an informal manner. <clears throat> but with that being said, Let's get into these uh, four different type of problems that will cover the majority of polynomial situations that you may face in, in any one of these particular math classes that you might be taking. Now, before you can factor a polynomial, you have to make sure that you can multiply polynomials. So if you don't know how to multiply two polynomials together, like using the FOIL method or the distributive property, <clears throat> then you're then you're going to really struggle uh, factoring polynomials. And I'll say additionally, if you can't factor polynomials, then you're going to struggle. It's probably it's going to be impossible for you to pass your algebra class or whatever other math class you might be uh, doing if it involves algebra. So this is an absolutely necessary um, topic to, to learn in math. Okay, so I've got four different situations here, and let's get into it. And if you understand these four scenarios, then you're going to be able to uh, really – um, handle most polynomial factoring problems that you encounter in algebra. All right, so the first is this problem, and this represents the GCF um, technique. Now, the GCF is the greatest common factor. You always, always start when you're looking at a polynomial to see if you can factor out a greatest common factor. Okay, now here you can. So each one of these um, problems that I have down here are factable. So if you want to pause the video and just factor them real quick, then that you know, then see my answers. And that's kind of a good little pop quiz for you. And these are pretty simple problems, so I wouldn't get necessarily <laughs> too overly confident if you can handle these. But it, that's a it's a good indication that you know what you're doing. But anyways, let's get into this. The greatest common factor is your the first place you always start when you see a polynomial. See so if you can factor out a greatest common factor. Now here. What that is, is the greatest, um, well, it, it's exactly what the name says. It's the greatest common factor. So what's common amongst these two terms here in terms of a number? Well, it's four, okay? And then they have the highest power of x. This is x cubed. This is x squared, but, they're, but they only share an, an x squared as there is uh, in common. So you would factor out an x squared like so, and that would leave you with, an x right here minus 2. Okay, now, if you weren't sure um, if this was the correct answer, you can multiply these together, and you can see you'd get back to this answer. Okay, <clears throat> so this right here, 4x squared, is the greatest common factor. Okay, that is the greatest common factor. Now, again, in a short period of time, I'm not going to be able to... Uh, um, teach you everything you need to know about the greatest common factor. So you should be somewhat familiar with how to do this. But when it comes to factoring polynomials, this is the number one place you want to start, okay? So if you don't know how to, um, uh, if you're not comfortable with, with factoring out the greatest common factor, I have videos on my YouTube channel. I go into it. Plus, um, you know, you might need more extensive instruction, so you might want to check out one of my courses. Just check out the link below. Okay, so that's the first scenario, okay? Now, the second scenario is this. If you can't factor out a greatest common factor, okay, let's say you're looking at a polynomial and there is no greatest common factor, well, that doesn't mean that you're done, okay? What you may have is one of these three remaining situations, okay? So let's just kind of talk about these here. So this is what we call a trinomial. There's three terms, but there's no greatest common factor. This is also a trinomial. There's three terms, but there's no greatest common factor. And the difference between these two trinomials is this one is just a 1x squared. There's just a 1 in front of it. And then this has a number other than 1. So here in this example, this is 2. Okay. So 
And what we have here are trinomials. Trinomials. So this is where you want to look for next, okay? So you, you checked out greatest common factors, and you're going to see if there's any trinomials. Now, the last um, problem here that you might encounter is a special factoring scenario, okay? So just we'll put the word here, special. So these four situ uh, scenarios here, four situations, will cover the majority of your factoring scenarios, okay? Now, I'm going to get into these problems, these last three problems here in a second, but I just wanted to just um, lay out the, the kind of like your mental organization in terms of, hey, I got to factor a polynomial, always start with the GCF. If I'm dealing with a trinomial, what type is it? I like to refer to this as a case one because there's a one in front of it, and then anything else is what we call, like, say, a case two, all right? And if, it, if you don't have a case one or case two, then see if there's any special factoring rules that, uh, that could apply to the polynomial. Okay, so let's get into this. So very briefly, um, a case one is a trinomial where there's just a one in front of the leading, um, it's a, the one is the leading coefficient, okay? So when you write it in standard form. So if you look here, the easiest way to factor a case one, if, if they are factorable, okay, let me just do it this way, is look at this last number, okay? That's negative six. Now, one way I kind of like to start students off um, a factor in case ones is to write out all the factors of a negative six. So here's how you do, okay? So negative six, you can write as one times six, a negative one times six, right? Will give you a negative six. One times a negative six will give you a negative six, okay? Two times three, negative two times three, and two times negative three. So these are all the different ways you can write um, our, uh, the factors of negative six, right? All these numbers, these different combinations, will, when you multiply these, these pairs together, will get you a negative six. Now, if you add up each one of these pairs, which what do you get here? You get a positive five, right? Negative one plus six is a positive five. One plus negative six is negative five. This right here is a one, and this is a negative one, right? So when you add all these uh, pairs together, so what you want to do is to see if you have a pair, any pairs of factors that add up to this center number, okay? So this is a 1x squared. This is a positive 1. So which one of these pairs adds up to a positive 1? It's these pairs, right? Negative 2 plus 3 gives you a positive 1. And these are the answers. These are the factors. So you could write this trinomial. You could factor it this way. Okay, you're always going to have two binomials. So it's going to be x minus 2, okay, one of those answers, and x plus 3 right there. So these are the factors to that uh, trinomial. It's as simple as that, okay? Of course, you need to practice this. Now, if you couldn't find any pairs of factors here that add up to that center number, then the factor, then the polynomial is unfactable. It's what we call prime. Okay, so let's move on to this case two. Now, the case two, you can do you can do this um, in a similar manner, but there's some ad additional steps. But I'm going to give you another technique you can, you can use to try to factor a case two. Let me write this a little better. I kind of call it the double smiley face. So the first thing is we have two x squared. So you want to write the factors of two x squared. There's, there's only one way to factor that, and that would be a two x and an x, right? So if I multiply two x and x together, I get a two x squared. There's no other way I could write that. Now, what we're trying to do here is play a little game to try to get back to this center number. Now, the way we have to do that is write the factors of negative five in this position right here. You'll see how this comes together here in a second. So negative five is what? One times negative five or negative five times one. So I'm gonna put this negative five right there and I'm gonna put a one right there, okay? Now, if what, if what I'm gonna show you doesn't work, I can just kind of maneuver these combinations around because I'm trying to uh, get back to the center number. Now I told you I was gonna use something called the double smiley face technique. So what that is, is you take this number here and you multiply it by this, okay? 
and that's one smiley face, if you will. And then we do this times this. So you can see we have two smiley faces. Let me draw this other one a little bit bigger. Okay, so we have one X, right? One times X is X, or one times X is one X, positive one X. And then I have two X times a negative five, that's negative 10 X. Now, if I add these two guys together, you're looking to see which combination gets back to the center term. So if you see here, a one X, a positive one X plus a negative 10 X gives me a negative nine X. So this, these uh, factors right here are correct, okay, be because of that. And if you wanted to, you can just multiply all this out to verify that, in fact, you have the correct factors, okay? So this is the double smiley face. Now, you could do this problem in a similar fashion as I did this first case one uh, problem, but there's some additional steps. So I really like the, kind of the double smiley face technique for this case two polynomials. And for case one, this, this technique I showed you here is just really straightforward, okay? So I would suggest using that um, as well. Okay, so now you have three things, we have three things uh, behind us, right? We have the greatest common factor, we always look there first, then if we're dealing with trinomials, what type? And if we don't have any trinomials, we don't have any greatest common factor, that doesn't mean that you're done. You may have a special factoring scenario. So if you look here, this last problem, there's no GCF, it's not a trinomial, so what do you do? Well, in this case, you just need to know the special factoring rules. Probably one of the most important is A squared minus B squared. Now, let me write this this way here. A squared minus B squared is equal to A plus B times A minus B. It's called the difference of two squares. It's used extensively, okay? when we're talking about factoring. So here, the way I would factor this, I would just simply need to know this rule. This is a special factoring rule. So this is gonna be x plus three times x minus three, okay? Write that a little bit better. So this is how this factors here, because I know the special factoring rule. Now, again, <clears throat> I'm gonna wrap up this video here. No way could I fit in what takes your teacher a couple weeks to, to teach you, um, uh, at least. The factoring is, is covered in, you know, in over and over in multiple math courses. So this is, this is a lot of, you know, skills that kind of build up. No way I, I, should you expect to just watch this video and be like a total expert. But if you have a clue about factoring and you know how to multiply and you're like, I oh, just kind of struggling or a little bit confused, then I think this video would definitely um, uh, should have helped you out, right? Because you always start here. You always start with the GCF. Then you look to see if you have any of these scenarios. And then if you don't, just make sure you don't have any special scenarios. If you follow this, you're going to be good to go in most uh, factoring situations. But again, if you need more help, you want to go ahead and check out some additional videos I have on my YouTube channel. So please consider subscribing. And if you do, hit that bell notification. And if you uh, like this video, hey, you know, give me a thumbs up. I appreciate that. And leave me comments. It's, um, <clears throat> it's one of the things that I try to, uh, to read it. I do get a lot of comments on my videos, which I'm grateful for. But it gives me feedback on, on videos that I, uh, future videos I can make that are going to help, uh, help you out. Um, again, you know, if you like my teaching style and you understand, you know, um, uh, you know, how I teach and you need extensive help in math, then you might want to consider... Uh, checking out some of my math courses, uh, and I'll leave a link in the description uh, in the video if you're interested there. But other than that, I appreciate your time, and have a great day.